Welcome to Life Devotions. Thank you for joining me today and the Lord bless you today. I want to talk to you today about being citizens of heaven. And I open my Bible with you in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, 2, and 3. It's a beautiful chapter of 1 John chapter 3. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us because it did not know Him. Beloved, now we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when He is revealed, when Jesus is revealed, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. And everyone who has this hope in Him purifies himself just as He is pure. Beloved, what love the Father has bestowed upon us. Does that ever overwhelm you? Do you ever in your prayer life say, Father, Father, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art that you've loved me with an everlasting love and that your love is unfailing to me, that you're always, always my Father. You know, we may not always act like children of God, but God is always the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's always our Father. You see that's so powerful in the story of Luke chapter 15 of the story of the prodigal son. The son did not act like he was a son, but the father was still the father. And when the son came running up to the father, or I should say when the father came running up to the son as he was on his way home, saying, I'm not worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. The father disregarded all of that and hugged him and kissed him put a new robe on him and put a new ring on his finger of ownership and put new shoes on his foot. And he said, my son who was dead is alive. He who was lost is found. Let us feast and celebrate. And he made the whole house feast because his son was back home. What made him the son was the love of the Father. What makes you and me sons and daughters of God is the love, the unfailing love of our Father. And I've seen this so many times. I've had the privilege in more than 40 years of ministering the Word of God, of seeing this happen, of people that turned away from the Lord and went through many years of difficulty and all of a sudden they came back home and they felt the love of the Father had never left them. The love of the Father was still available to them and they were restored and renewed and made right with God. Oh, what a wonderful thing to experience this purity of being sons and daughters of God. You know, it says in Ephesians 2, verse 19, let me read that to you. It says, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. And the household of God, yes, is the church, but it's bigger than that. It's the church throughout the whole world, but it's also the church of those who are already in heaven. Paul says in Philippians 1, to be, a, and in 2 Corinthians 5, to be absent of the body is to be present with the Lord. Uh, it says that there in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and he says, what is far better for me is to be with the Lord, to depart and be with the Lord. You know, what a wonderful thing that you, uh, Colossians 1.12 says, that you have been qualified and made fit to share the inheritance of the saints in the light. What a joy that you're no longer a stranger, you know, anybody who goes to any church anywhere in the world and who comes to visit here at Life Church, I always want them to feel welcome, even if they're used to a different style, a different method, a different way. I've never, never felt to uh, look down, the opposite actually, look down on the different methods and ways that are in different churches. I, I, I like to look back at the history of it and appreciate and respect the value that is placed upon these different ways. And so people call it that religion. I would never use those terms. I, I don't like those terms. I don't like people that come and because people have certain traditions that you look down on it. I've had the privilege to preach in many places where all the women sit on one side and all the men sit on another side where the women wear head coverings and long dresses and have long hair and 
and wear no makeup or jewelry or anything like that. Uh, I don't like to go there and think that those people are awkward or strange, not at all. I respect and highly respect and value their traditions that have come out of real devotion to God and love for God and respect to Him. And, and I could give you many scriptures that show this kind of respect and love that God has for this too. At the same time, I have been with Christians that are not dressed very properly and yet the Lord loves them too. Uh, and that doesn't mean we make a fashion out of the way people dress uh, because we should be properly dressed according to scripture. But, you know, I love people from all kinds of different church backgrounds. And I want everybody to feel welcome and at home. I tell you, when you go to heaven, we're not going to be segregated in our different methods and ways. We're going to all be in one body, in one spirit, in one faith, with one Father and one Son and one Holy Spirit. There's not going to be any segregation. There's not going to be any segregation between colors of skin or different traditions of food. And no, the Bible shows us very clearly in Colossians 3 verse 11 that there will be no distinction there. We all are one. And I do believe personally that the only place on earth where we can find this kind of oneness, where there is no segregation or disrespect towards anybody for any reason ought to be in the church. It ought to be in the church. And I, I find it painful when people are unkind to others because they're different. I, I really find that hard. I ha actually have the greatest respect when people come to Life Church from a very different religious background and they feel at home here. I mean, I have the greatest respect for that when maybe the traditions we are not familiar with here. Maybe those traditions are not familiar here. It's not that we disrespect them, them or don't value them. It's just we don't know them. We haven't been raised with them here. And I just find I have great respect when people feel loved and accepted and welcome. And, and what I'm trying to say to you is your Heavenly Father doesn't want you to feel like a stranger in His house. He doesn't want you to feel like you don't fit, you don't belong. No, he wants you to know that you're a member of his household. You're a citizen of heaven. You belong to his kingdom. <laughs> Look what it says in Philippians 3, verse 20 and 21. We are citizens of the state and commonwealth and homeland which is in heaven. And from it also we earnestly and patiently await the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, as Savior. And we who will transform and fashion anew the body of our humiliation to conform and be like the body of His glory and majesty by exerting that power by which He, by which enables Him even to subject everything to Himself. And I know that's a bit of a thought, but I love that thought there. Let me read you that same last verse, 21 of Philippians chapter 3 in the King James. And he will transform our lowly body, our human body, according to the working by which he's able even to subdue all things to himself. By the working of his mighty power, by which he's able to subdue all things to himself. I love that thought. I live in that power today. And I have experienced that kind of grace in all the different churches I've had the privilege to minister in. You know, many years ago, oh, I can't remember, it's probably in the 90s now, that I got the privilege to minister in Stonehouse in Gloucestershire in an Anglican church, a high Anglican church. And I'd never, never been in that kind of a church before my life because I hadn't grown up in this country, so I didn't know it. And I was invited by this precious man. His wife was the head of the, uh, of the Mother's Union, I think it's called. It's a, a phenomenal, phenomenal women's organization in the Anglican church. And, uh, and so these were really respectable people. And I, I love them. Oh, how good they were to me. I was in their home and I had tea with them and they were so kind to receive me and gracious. And listen, 
you know, the, there was a man with a long rope on and he had a long stick with a golden cross and he walked in front and there was two other men in long ropes and then the minister, the vicar in his beautiful long ropes and there I was in my suit and my tie, which really I personally thought looked inferior to theirs. I thought their ropes were much more beautiful. And anyway, we're walking to the front, they go out of the way, the minister kneeled down, so I did what he did. He bowed his head to the picture of Jesus there on this beautiful painting. And, and I sat there next with him in the front and we sang some hymns with the beautiful church organ, the pipe organ. And I asked the Lord Jesus while I was sitting there, Lord Jesus, what would you like me to tell them? He said, tell them how much I love them. And the moment I got up, His Holy Spirit granted me utterance to speak His life-giving words about His great love for them. And all these people that were trained to, be, to not show much emotion, all the cracks in their faces filled with tears as they felt the love of the Lord Jesus Christ and were very familiar with it. Don't think people are not charismatic or spiritual when they don't have maybe your different ways. They're just as much a citizen of heaven as anybody else. And I can give you so many of these stories. I one time had the privilege to minister somewhere. Uh, and uh, well, anyway, I'll, I'll not take more time from you. But what I want to say to you today, love one another, make people feel part of the family, make people feel loved. And just because they're different doesn't make them not part of the family. We're all part of God's family. You're part of God's family and He loves you. And I consider it a privilege to share this with you. Have a good day.